the biggest thing that makes men break up with women is a lack of repair, a lack of ownership, a lack of saying, baby, I know, I know you have more testosterone. And I know that I walk around chasing you from room to room, poking, 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 poking until you explode and slam a door. And then, then I change the, 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 the argument about you exploding. Right now, it's not just the thing I was just shaming you for. Blessings and blessings, beautiful soul. Today's transmission is the three reasons why men break up with their partners. This one's going to be a doozy. Um, I definitely have some energy around this one. And there's a multitude of reasons, but it's the same reasons over and over and over again. And John Gray nailed it when he wrote, men are from Mars, women are from Venus. Uh, This is not a knock towards either sex. Um, It is a reality that especially those in long-term committed relationships uh, run into often. And so here's uh, what I find to be interesting and a part of why men leave. Mm-hmm. I have many friends and I've been this person who have started to calculate things and start to look down the barrel at 20, 30, 40 years of this particular type of energy and uh, sometimes men especially hedge their bets and say, screw it. I will, I'll, I'd rather just be alone than to go through this particular thing. So I want to start by saying everybody's doing the best they can with the tools and consciousness they have available to them. Uh, I also want to share that I do believe that there's a big distinction, um, that we're working with, which is the distinction we're, we're, we're up against biology, right? Nature. And we're up against nurture. We're up against Hollywood. We're up against, um, um, Snow White and Prince Charming and all of the other ideas that especially little girls and little boys are pumped with. Um, and so what I want you to know is if you're in a, committed relationship now, or you've recently been broken up with in some form or fashion, we always enter these relationships with good intentions. And quite often those intentions fall by the wayside because we're talking about, you know, 20 to 30 to 40 years worth of programming and conditioning and biology up against someone else's 20 to 30 to 40 years of programming, conditioning, and biology. So there are schools of thought that would say, you know, we should go back to gender roles or whatever that case may be. And I don't even agree with that. I I don't care what the roles are. What I care about and what I see so many men and women complain about, but especially men um, when, when other women aren't around, is this idea that there are two types of women. There are the type of women who apologize for doing crazy things, things that are hurtful. And there are women who don't. And oftentimes men, and please, if you are in a relationship, please let this land. Oftentimes men will have this thing come up for them where they believe, essentially, there's no way to win this. Any move I make, anything I do, she's going to come up with a way or slash move the, the goalpost and not give me credit for hitting the goal that was over there. And so what men sort of end up being up against, and I know I'm speaking very generally, but generally speaking, if we asked a hundred men, are you afraid of your wife or girlfriend? Most of them, if you asked really deeply and got them to be vulnerable, I'd say probably 95 of them would say yes. Um, And it's not because they think they're going to be, you know, abused by them physically. No, it's a different kind of abuse. It's emotional abuse. 
It's a way to constantly have somebody be in hypervigilance and nobody wants to be in hypervigilance. Everybody's looking for safety. Everybody wants to feel safe with their partners, with their person, with their friends, with their dog. Everybody wants to feel safe on their couch. And if being on my couch or being in my own skin at my own home means that I am constantly being um, blamed for things. And even when this quote unquote perfect person that I started dating who never ever makes mistakes, even when this person clearly makes mistakes, she still finds a way to justify and turn it around and use it for more shame. Now, to the credit of those who happen to do this, I don't think it's on purpose. I think that it is a unconscious control strategy to stay safe. It is a way to poke the bear constantly to prove that he's going to leave just like my dad did or whatever the case may be, or just like my ex-boyfriend did. Um, way number one. The number one way. This is really the biggest one. There's no, the, the other two I'm going to share with you are definitely impactful. But the biggest thing that makes men break up with women is a lack of repair. A lack of ownership. A lack of saying, baby, I know, I know you have more testosterone. And I know that I walk around chasing you from room to room, poking, 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 poking until you explode and slam a door. And then, then I change the, 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 the argument about you exploding, right? Now it's not just the thing I was just shaming you for. Globally, which is number two. Now it's now your behavior. Right? Because a civilized man never has testosterone, never has more energy than a woman, right? I, as a woman, am raising my voice, my energy, right? We know that 73% of, of communication is nonverbal. My energy is blaming. Or I hold the victim card and I pull myself into this super sad, depressive state to control you. Either way. I, as the woman, know I'm doing that or have some semblance of it, but nope. Everything's your fault. Ladies, let this conversation really, I, I, I know you do, but I just want you to hear it. If you really love your partner and this doesn't change, and I know what you're saying already, but what about us? What about if your partner's this, that, and the other? What if it's him? What if it's... Uh? Okay, just listen for a moment. Just see if you can let this land for you. I'm speaking to you. You cannot... You can do whatever you want, but I just want you to understand that men have nervous systems and hearts too. And just because we don't cry tears as fast as you do, nor take our issues to our girlfriends and have them validated so that we're even more mad at you, doesn't mean that our hearts aren't breaking. So a lot of men will just find the back door. All right, I'm out. Can't win. Nothing. Nothing I do. Um, I had a friend recently tell me that she um, told her husband after 22 years that she needed him. And I just thought about how beautiful that was. How every man longs to hear that. Especially if he hears more often than not what he's not. Which leads me to number two. The number two reason why men break up with women and walk away in some form or fashion is when you speak globally. Now, I'm going to speak, there's globally and there's locally, right? Right now, I'm speaking globally because I, I don't know a specific situation, but I am giving you little local moments that could be true for you. So if you speak to your partner globally and you say things like, they're, like you you don't love me the way X or, you know, I just feel like you don't respect me. That's global. And it's a way to take shots at his character. Maybe you don't see it that way. But when a man is breaking his back in every direction to try to make sure your life is good, if, if he's stretching himself to try to be a better human and taking you on dates and, and you know, acquiescing and, and, and getting outside of his comfort zone to serve and support you, 
And then what comes back a week later, two weeks later, three weeks later is more of what he's not. And you're speaking globally. It's not, hey, baby, I just need more kisses. Our uh, therapist spoke about this in, in one of his programs. And he said, it's the distinction between speaking at and speaking from. And a lot of people, especially women, are used to speaking at. And men are used to taking that and not knowing what to do with it because we don't have the distinctions. Um, for instance, if you say, I feel like you, I'm already starting with violent communication, whether I say it at this voice or I say it at this tone. I feel like you is our fighting words. You're instantly placing your feelings onto him. You're instantly. What's coming after that is not a feeling. It's come, It's a story. I feel sad. And the story I made up or the story I'm sitting with is that because you didn't kiss me, this is facts this morning, that you don't love me. Can you please help me with this, baby? That's very different than... So you're the type of person that clearly doesn't kiss anyone when they leave. So like, maybe you just don't like love me. Like, do you even want to be in this? Like, what is this? One of those is speaking from, and obviously it's going to be more vulnerable. And the other one is speaking at, and more than likely going to create some fights. So, uh, way number two is speaking globally. Way number three is um, allowing yourself, right? This is guys leave and this all goes back to number one, right? But not really. Because number one was about apologizing. Um, number two is about how you're actually speaking to this person when you're bringing all the content that you have. And number three is about... um just making him feel loved, right? This guy deserves to feel loved too. I get it. All of our society is set up in a way in which the man is supposed to whine and dine and romance and X, Y, and Z, and and he's never supposed to get that from anyone else. And so if you don't give it, if you don't love on him, if you don't tell him he's handsome, if you don't tell him you're proud of him, even if he's not a millionaire, if he has a dream and there's something he's working on, if you don't help him with his, you know, his own nervous system, right? It's clear men are supposed to help women with theirs. But what about his? So if a man doesn't feel loved on, if he feels like there's no, this is not a nurturing space because he assumes that he's supposed to nurture you too, right? It's not either or, but if it feels like a give-take relationship, where it's one-sided, he's going to leave. And oftentimes, um, some women, not all, will withhold those things until, right? So they'll hold those things hostage until the man does X, Y, and Z, and he can feel that energy. Now he's, he's, he's not, it's performance-based worthiness, right? Now he has to perform in order to, to get your approval, in order to get your love, which is very different than what he experienced probably with his own mom. So, take all of this with a grain of salt. Maybe I don't know anything. Maybe the guys I talk to and coach and have been around for the last 10 years, maybe they don't know anything. Maybe the, the divorce rate in the U.S. and across the world is just a fluke. But what if it's not? What if I'm even partially right? Please, if this landed in any way, I challenge you to share it um, with one of your girlfriends. I challenge you to leave a comment below and say, okay, P, I can argue this that the cows come home. I can come up with a million statistics as to why guys are terrible and a piece of shit or whatever else I would say. Um, and there's some truth here. Um, and so here's where I'm willing to take responsibility. Because men are scared of women for that very reason. It doesn't seem to be any space for our feelings or who we are in these relationships. I love you all.
Thank you for taking the time to listen to this podcast. Thank you for taking the time to watch this on YouTube or wherever it is. Um, we may not always agree, but I'm always going to share my truth. So love you all so much. Thank you.